All right, now I'm going to throw a plate. And to throw a plate or a large, wide kind of form, even if it's a bowl or something like that, I recommend you throw on a bat. So I've got a couple of bat pins here. I'm going to put them in the bat pin holes in the wheel. Be real sure that you don't start the wheel spinning now because it hurts when these things hit you uh, with the wheel on. Um, and then I'm going to take a bat and uh, line up the holes in the bat with the bat pins. There are different kinds of bats that can be used. Um, I prefer this kind, but there's also the plastic bats. Uh, and uh, uh, you can choose, you can play around with different ones that, that you might work with. So I am going to throw a relatively small plate today. Um, I'm going to take, this is a laminate top so I don't need to get it wet. I'm going to put the clay on and I'm going to start throwing. Get my hands nice and wet, lean my center of gravity over the clay. And I'm going to center it just like I normally would. We want the clay centered, and so I like to cone it up. You, coning up is optional, as you recall. Get this clay centered. Some people like to throw on the bat all the time, um, and that is perfectly fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you have to, another thing to clean, but um, some people prefer to work this way. So I'm going to, uh, now that this clay is centered, I'm going to bring it down nice and low. And so it's important when you do this that you uh, don't just let it kind of flop over and fold over. You want to press it down and uh, make sure that it's attached to the wheel head. So my pressure from my hand is coming down. As the clay comes down, as you remember, it's easiest for it to come out. This hand is going to force that clay to come down, hit the wheel head first, rather than just kind of flop out like a, a mushroom top or something like that. I also recommend that when you start to throw plates, you start relatively small. Um, I'm, this is a relatively small, like a little dessert plate or something like that. I recommend that you guys do that. Uh, it's a little bit easier uh, to start with. You don't make mistakes with as much clay, necessarily. I've still got some air pockets in here, so I'm popping them out of there. So, as you can see already, the biggest part of the process really is uh, centering the clay and uh, then after that opening out that floor because you don't have much wall to bring up so a lot of your work is focused in this, this kind of getting ready stuff in the early stages of the plate. I still feel a little bit of a, hole, a bump there. All right, so now I'm going to uh, drill my hole, and of course drilling my hole is going to be a very quick process here. I get myself centered, my arms are braced on my legs or the splash pan or my body, drill my hole, add some water, and now I'm going to start to pull out. So pulling out your floor, opening out your floor, is the, the, the most important process, I would say, in the plate. It's also the process, the, the thing that if you kind of skip through it or don't do it as well, you're going to end up with cracks in your plate. So I'm going to open out my floor and try to keep it level. It's difficult, um, but you can see, see I keep going back to the middle and, and coming back out. As I get to this edge, I compress my rim, just like I would if I was throwing anything else. I don't want to have rips and, and unevennesses happening out here. And then I'm going to come back to my floor. I need to do the, you know, need to pull out and need to compress it uh, basically a few times. Um, I'm using a small plate, so I'm using a smallish rib here, and I'm going to compress this floor. And this is really the important part of the process. If you don't compress your floor, if you don't press the, the, the uh, particles of clay together, you end up with cracks that form in your, in your floor later on. Biggest problem I think people have with plates is cracks in their floor. And those cracks can show up later on. They don't necessarily show up uh, when you trim it or, or when it's drying. They can show up uh, during the drying process after trimming or even in the kiln. Uh, so we want to work on, on trying to avoid that. So I'm using a rib uh, to compress that floor. Um, there are certain ribs that people use that are specific for, for larger floors, um, uh, uh, larger plates, excuse me, um, and they'll get that whole whole space there. 
Um, you can also use different angles on this edge. I'm doing kind of a sharp angle and then I'll pull up this wall uh, just a little bit. Obviously I don't have much wall here to work with. Compress my rim. Sometimes you can grab a little of that clay that's at the bottom, this bottom edge, and bring get yourself a little bit more height. And that's about it. Um, so the process looks sort of deceptively simple. The, the trick there is working with that um, compression of that floor. Um, at this point, you can undercut. Take away some of that clay. I recommend undercutting just because it saves you time later on when you're trying to trim this thing. And it is also quite important that you run a wire through the bottom. Um, I have people argue with me on this one, and I, you know, if, if you're going to decide not to run a, a wire through this, then you are eventually going to have a crack in the floor. It's going to happen during the bisque firing process, and I'm going to say I told you so. So run that wire through. You do not have to take it off the bat, but you do need to run that wire through. And, and the reason for that, for running the wire through, is that the clay will shrink from wet to leather hard until you're ready to trim, it will shrink. And as it shrinks, as it dries out, the clay particles come closer together. In the wall, they have plenty of room to do that. In the floor, if it's still attached to the wheel head, they can't move together because they're stuck. And so what will happen is they'll move apart and you'll get this weak spot through the middle of the, the um, plate. So I've wired this through. I may have to rewire it once it's leather hard, but at least that first cut that I've got in there gives it some room to shrink. And then this bat, if I can get the right spot on it, will come up and I can just move it away and get ready to work on the next piece, put another bat down.